Hello, I'm Nicola Blakemore, and this podcast is to have a little chat, talk about what's stopping you from painting. It's an interesting question, isn't it? What's stopping me from painting? I hear that quite a lot, both here on my painting holidays, in my tutorials and my students online. What's stopping me painting? Now, if the answer comes back that, well, I haven't really got the time, I'm too busy at work, um, oh, well, I have to clear the table for meal times, I don't have anywhere to paint, oh, I haven't got the right paints at the moment, when I can afford it, I'll get some new paints. Well, those aren't really reasons, those are excuses. Excuses. And you hear this a lot. You ask somebody if they want to do something with you, go or go shopping or go on a holiday. Say, oh, well, I can't really afford it at the moment, or whatever it is. But what they're really saying is that they don't want to spend the money on that. People always find the time and the money to do what they want to do. So if you don't want to do it, then that's fine. That's fine. But if the same question crops up, why aren't I painting? And the answer comes back, uh, well, I don't have anything I want to paint at the moment. I can't think what to paint. Or, well, I've got a painting in mind, but I don't know where to start. Or, well, I'm frightened of starting because I don't think it'll be any good. And when I do start, I usually make a mess of it anyway. Well, these are more reasons than excuses. But what they are in actual fact is you operating with a limited belief. What that means is that something, a limiting belief, something that's stopping you, has got into your belief system. You believe that the sun will rise each day. Yeah, we hope. That's a fact. But all these things you say about yourself, well, I, I'm going to make a mess of it. Uh, I'm not any good. Oh, I wasn't as good as my mother or my sister. Or the oh, the people in the art class are so much better than me. Well, that's just all. That's all just limiting stuff. It's not reality. These aren't facts. These are little stories. They are things that have got into your belief system, which are not true. I hope that makes sense. What you're doing is you are letting other people who have told, said, done, whatever, control you. So your teacher at the age of maybe when you were, I don't know, only young. I had one lady tell me this. Um, she was at school. She was given a painting assignment. It wasn't what the teacher wanted. She tore it up and put it in the bin. What's that going to do to a child? So this has gone on. And of course, you see, over the years, it becomes bigger and bigger and more compounded. Is that the right expression? It becomes more, more of a reality when, in fact, it isn't. It isn't a reality. So this is where you are getting in your own way from doing things that you want to do. It's fear. That's all it is. At the end of the day, whenever something stops us doing, it is fear. It's fear of failure, fear of getting it wrong, fear of it not being good enough, fear, fear, fear. But half the time, it isn't justified. So, for example, uh, yeah, I see comments um, in the various groups on social media and stuff. Um, oh, I'm going to do this this painting on Nicholas Cause. I'm really looking for, to, forward to doing it when I can pluck up the courage to start. Well, what's that about? I'm not asking you to scale a mountain. All I'm asking you to do is to pick up a paintbrush, get some paper, paints, and follow step-by-step -step instructions. It really is a very strong influence 
on you, this limiting belief. And you come out of family cultures as well. If your mother was a worrier, you will probably learn to be a worrier. Okay? Because that's a learnt behaviour. And limiting beliefs are similar in that you have accepted it as a truth and it may not be so. But also remember, I had a lady a while ago on a painting holiday. She was doing really well. Quite an uptight lady though. I imagine her house is very, very neat and tidy. God bless her. And she was doing really well, get, loosening up, painting, enjoying it. And then I could see the tears starting to come in her eyes. And I thought, oh, crumbs, what's going on here? So come on, let, let's go in the garden for a walk and we'll have a chat. And she was getting really upset with herself because she said, I should be able to do it. Why? Why? When you got into a car for the first time, assuming you are a driver out there, did you think, oh, I should be able to do this? <laughs> all over the place you forget you are learning and this is often the case with painting as well and it does depend on it depends on you it depends on your character you're probably never going to be a wet splodgy big brush person if you like everything really neat and tidy and orderly but i'm going off the subject a little bit there what i want to say is for you to Stop getting in your own way. When these thoughts come, and they do, we all have them, the stories we make up in our heads, fantasy situations of who's saying what, doing what, and, and all this sort of stuff. And it's all, it's all in here. It's all a load of rubbish, most of it. And think about the dialogue you're using as well. I mean, I'm as bad. I do something wrong, I make a mistake, I think, oh, for goodness sake, are you stupid, what have you done that for? Hello, don't you think to be, you deserve to be treated a bit better than that? Certainly from yourself. I mean, you wouldn't talk to a, a dear friend or a little child like that, would you? Or a family member. Mind you, it depends on what your family's like, I suppose. <laughs> But think about what's going on in your head when you are painting and what's stopping you, what's resisting, what's the resistance of actually doing it. When you find this coming up, stop. Take a deep breath. Count to ten. Do whatever you want to do. And if you find that the little jabba jabba is there, just say, OK, I hear you. Would you like to go away now, please? And that usually can bring you back into focus. And if you are feeling intimidated by a painting, don't start it. Wait till you're feeling a bit more upbeat. Do something little, do something small, do sort of uh, colour squares, do anything. But most of all, enjoy it. It's not an assignment. It's not something you're going to be marked on or or you won't get the job nobody's going to die hopefully it is only a piece of paper a brush and a few paints and if you let go it can be a lot of fun so i think that's sort of enough for now really to bombard you with but this limiting belief it really is it can grow. It, it, you know, you start off thinking you're no good at something at school and it can stay with you. And of course, then every time you approach it, you think, oh, I'm no good at this, am I? Oh, oh, I'm going to make a mistake. I better be careful. So do try. No, I'm not going to word, use that word try. If you use the word try, that's all you ever do. Think about the dialogue you use when you're talking to yourself. And please, please. Just do it. Just do it and enjoy it. And it will become easier. It will become a second nature. It will become so much more pleasurable. Because if it ain't pleasurable, what's the point in doing it? Anyway, whatever you get up to now, enjoy your painting. And thanks for listening. <laughs>